Hey everyone, today we are back to the truck camp. Today is September 4th, 2023, and we really haven't used this thing since my last winter camping video. If you saw, we made a video, it actually did pretty well. I'm surprised how many people actually watched it. I think it had like 1.6 million views of building this thing, putting the wood stove in it, and camping in it. Then I made another video after that later on in the winter when it was even colder. Well, today is the complete opposite. This summer has been pretty cold for us. Our average temperature is like 76 in the summer. This, this year it was very cool and rainy almost every single day. And we got a bunch of firewood here. I actually just brought that firewood here a couple months ago, so that's not ready to burn. I got other things though. I think there's even wood inside it. We're not heating today with, with this wood stove. We're gonna use it for cooking for maybe an hour, but it's hot. Today it's 86 degrees here, so in there might be like an oven. I don't know. There's no sun shining today. Barely bl any blue sky anyways. But that, that's probably a good thing that it's not super sunny. Even with the reflective roof, this thing is still going to be like an oven. I just know it. But I was up here a couple weeks ago going in this truck. It was completely grown in. You couldn't even walk there. So I just quickly with a machete made a trail. This was completely grown in. Now I'm intentionally letting things grow against it. I want this thing to be completely hidden like inside a bush. It's metal. There's nothing to rot. And this thing has been put together now since last fall in the same exact way. Everyone thought this roof was going to blow off because it's not screwed down at all. This thing is just sitting there with heavy cinder blocks across it. The only problem I had with the roof was in the winter, there was a period we had almost three feet of snow on the roof. I came out here during my really cold camp and fired the wood stove up. It was so cold that enough air was able to pass underneath the corrugation so nothing really melted off it during the camp. But the roof was buckling a little bit. So either today or tomorrow after we're done camping in here, I want to go to the store. I want to get a carrying beam and two lolly columns as a temporary fix in case I don't come back here in the winter so it doesn't, for whatever reason, crush the roof. It's been a rainy year, so it could be a very snowy year and the thing could get crushed. The truck sat out here for... I'd say, well, actually, on the back of the truck, if we climb through all the bushes, it says the last time it was registered on the license plate, actually. So we just got to go look at that. How long has it been out here? 1992 is the last time it was registered. So I'm assuming that's the last time this rig was on the road. So it's been sitting here for... 32 years just about so yeah this thing never got crushed in 32 years of snow but what changes with me putting this metal on there it's not the added weight of the cinder block it's I put a little beam in the middle to give it a tilt towards each side because it had a little slump in the roof if I put this on there with the slump the slump was enough it would get between the panels and come in anyways and start leaking as it was so that's why I gave it a little teeny pitch, but that pitch means all the weight is on the center of the truck, and that's what would lead to its failure. The reason I built the roof like this is because it wasn't supposed to be like this forever. I had plans this year. It's definitely not happening this year. I was going to have a friend come up who do, does framing. We were going to put like a 45-degree A-frame across the whole top of it with a, like a hatch. You could go up there, and that would be the sleeping quarters, and it would be really warm up there in the winter, but... I thought about it and to do that the right way where mice or nothing to get into it because that would need to be insulated because if you have a it, up north if you're heating your house and it's freezing cold outside it's going to create condensation on the inside of the walls if you don't have insulation and that creates mold so we got this thing here i don't know what that is all over it this is from our winter camping videos we got a couple spiders living in it and look at this, this thing just sitting here all summer, just baked, nothing really grew under it. Right there is very slimy, like maybe slugs were hanging out. It smells in there like fuel, but this thing doesn't have a fuel tank anymore. Like you open this thing up right here. Oh, actually it does still have a fuel tank. I wonder if there's anything in it. Did we ever take a dip on this thing? I don't know if we ever took a dip on this truck. 
Was this thing gasoline or diesel? I have no idea. It's gasoline, I can smell residue of it. So is there fuel inside this truck? I don't know. We'll go, we'll go get, try to find something where we can take a dip in that. But if, if there is any fuel in there, we'll see. Oh, got a spider friend right there. Look at that guy. Oh, boop. I also put this light up here, which is very handy coming out here. A lot of people said I should lock it up, so I did. I just didn't lock it last time I was out here. Oh, look at this guy. It's like a, a hornworm. Here. Got a hornworm and a lot of flying ants right there. And let's go inside. Come on, spider. I want to crush you in the door. So, I discovered when I was last in here, I gotta do a lot of cleaning. I just reset these mouse traps, which were all triggered. This was not on the floor last time. It looks like blood, but it's, you know it's not. Uh, our cheap dollar store thermometer couldn't even survive falling from right here. So we have no idea how hot it is in here. It's not accurate anymore. We gotta get a thermometer. It feels humid in here. Like it's wet. So maybe something started leaking. It was a very rainy summer. I gotta go grab a couple camera lights. And you see in here I got, these are all my camping stoves from the winter camping videos. We use this one, that thing worked like a great rocket stove. This was awesome for very cold camps because it's got a big, big enough firebox that stayed warm all night. This one I never used because I wanted to convert it to gas with a, um, I wanted it to have a pilot light and a thermostat like a, gas water heater where it would turn on and off by itself throughout the night but i never really researched how to do it i know it's a hundred percent possible but i've just never done it and in here is a bunch of random junk that just came with the truck and i left it in here and um yeah this all this random stuff in here is just stuff that i'm storing in here so i'm gonna take all this out of here it can't go out the back door anymore because i'm trying to like surround this thing in bushes Right here we have some mouse poops on the counter. I didn't leave any food in here other than that coffee, which they didn't get into. So we might even find some mice now. Boom. Inside here. This was like kindling and stuff I left in here for our fires. Definitely evidence of mice chewing in there. Yeah, look at that. There's like a mouse nest in there. Are we gonna find one? Lots of mouse nests. Thankfully, I don't live in a place where hantavirus is really common. But we'll use that box. We'll burn everything in here. This is actually probably enough stuff to cook a dinner. That's a, good, that's a good amount of wood. And we still got a pile there from the winter, so I don't think we even have to go looking for things. Um, we have a broom in here. We'll sweep up the floor. We got Windex, which isn't exactly a cleaner, but it'll work. We got to get all this stuff outside. I, you see, I mentioned this once in the winter. Why am I tripping over all this building material? Is it really worth it every time I come here to have to bring it outside and bring it right back in for the price of actually using it because if i use it for a project it's probably not going to be used here which means i gotta haul it somewhere look at all this mouse poop all right that's not a big deal to clean they didn't make a huge mess the only reason they made a mess is because i left something in here that they could live in now up here is that poops or is that rust might be a little of both we got, we got to sweep this place up. More random stuff that I collect on the side of the road, which will probably never get used. I actually found this floor vent in the side of the road that I intended on using in my house as gravity vents for the wood stove in the basement, but turns out the heat produced by the wood stove, it makes all the floors in the house feel like they're heated upstairs, so it has no problem getting up. It just goes up the staircase, hot air up top, freezing air you can feel pouring this is where i put all my other stuff was i right 
Is that a poop? Is that a mouse poop? I don't know, but... I feel like if they actually found a way in the microwave, it would be really chewed. So I think we're good. I don't think they found a way in the microwave. Maybe? Do you guys think it's possible they get made it in the microwave? Because... I don't see anything chewed, but I saw like something in there, like a poop. I don't. I, they couldn't have made it in here. They would have made this into an awesome little house. We got pot holders and stuff. I don't know. Are those little pieces of poop? I don't know. Maybe. I'm not using any of the stuff in here. That's gross. We can use those plates as kindling. And the toilet paper's wrapped up, so yeah, I, I can still use that. It is getting hot in here. I, I want to go grab a actual thermometer so we can figure out what it is in here. See how this is a little bit discolored? This is where the roof was originally leaking in here. There's like a pinhole somewhere where I had to have a bucket down here for the first year of this place. And last time I was out here, it hasn't rained in a couple of days. It's actually been hot out. This is actually a hot stretch of weather now in September. There was a puddle right here but the roof wasn't leaking. It was actually coming down the chimney pipe from the really heavy rain. If you look right here, you can see evidence of where the water was leaking out of the chimney pipe. And um, you see where it was actually leaking out of the wood stove. So in the torrential rain, it was actually able to get in the chimney cap and come right down inside here. Not a huge amount, I'm not worried about it. These thin single wall pipes like this, if you're using them nonstop for heating your house, you actually have to replace those like every two or three years. If you buy the really expensive stainless steel ones like I have on my house, those ones will go, I think they have a lifetime warranty. But this stuff here, nonstop, or in this case getting wet where they're not intended on getting wet, that's gonna cause a problem. The silver pipes outside are intended on getting wet, so if I redo it, maybe I won't make it look so nice. Maybe the whole thing will be the galvanized pipes which seem to do a little better. Or maybe not that close to the stove. I, I really don't know about that. Did I clean this thing out last time I was out here? Sort of, it looks like. All right. So, I'm not worried about sleeping in here tonight because um, when you're out in the middle of the woods, it could be almost 90 in the day, but at night it's gonna drop and cool down really fast. And also, if you guys noticed, I noticed it was getting really hot in the summer, so I have this free side of the road screen that I actually left here most of the summer, and I just lean this free side of the road jack stand against it, and yeah, bear something could get in there, but that's probably how I'll sleep throughout the night. I'll find a way to maybe close that up a little tighter. That's one awesome thing about this summer. A lot of nights it drops down into the 50s or even 40s, uncomfortable for the mosquitoes despite it being such a rainy year mosquitoes haven't been doing good which is kind of awesome so i got this random thing right here Let's see if that can be a dip or not the way this pipe is shaped it's tight but it's going around the corner but no, that did not. We need something like a hose or something that can reach the bottom of that tank. All I could find is a piece of ragweed. Like, this should work as a dipstick. Nothing yet. Maybe if we bend it, so it looks like the tank is like a triangle, so it all comes to one end. Guess that's a good sign, I'm not finding anything. It just smells like fuel. We haven't been lighting a wood stove directly above a ton of fuel. And look at this everyone, right here, we have some blackberries with a spider right there living in the middle of them all. Those will be tasty. 
If I remember correctly, there should be a broom in here. Look at this, we just got a nice discount shelf candle. I had some paper towels in the car. Our hornworm friend is still there. Oop. Gotta open this thing up. Look at what it's doing to me. I got so many pricker bushes here along the trail coming into the door. It just cuts you up. Got a nice bright light. So we gotta just get some of this stuff off the floor. Looks like a lot of debris right here that the mice have been tracking in because they're most likely coming in through these holes where the pedals are and stuff. We gotta sweep the floor. So I'll just sweep part of it and move everything and then sweep the rest. First, I gotta work on getting all this debris out of here. We'll just kick all this down onto the floor to sweep it up. These mice made a pain in the butt mess. I don't think a lot of the stuff's coming back in here, guys. I don't think it's worth it, tripping over the stuff, moving it back and forth. A lot of the stuff I'm going to just bring to the local landfill. Not to waste it. They have a facility where they reuse things. You can just leave it in a place, and they take it. Or, I mean, anyone else can pick through it. That's where some of my stuff comes from. Like over here, that's my bed for tonight. Why do I have fencing out here? I have no idea. I'm just using it for storage, but it doesn't have to be indoors. Those buckets there are full of hundreds of vintage maple taps for trees. It does smell musty in here. But this building's metal. If there's mold or anything growing, it's going to be on this garbage in here. So we got to get this thing cleaned up. Yeah, we definitely got to go to the store and get some things, including a thermometer once we're done in here. Look at the trees. They grew so much this season. I love this. This little shack is becoming so well hidden. Look what extreme heat and humidity can do. Is that? Oh, I thought that was mold in there in the dark. No. It's spray paint. Thank God. This type of stuff's getting donated. It's so dirty, it's literally not even worth my time cleaning this. You know how cheap a 10 gallon tank is at the store? Not worth tripping over it and having to clean that someday. I found these pink boxes on the side of the road years ago, thinking I could use them for something. Nope, just clutter. All right, I'm getting rid of everything here. It's not worth it anymore. Plus, those pieces are actually growing mold, the pieces that were near the floor. And I kept this stuff because I thought it was really nice trim. It's stupid. Tripping over something I'm never gonna use. I also just picked up some things along the trail that are never gonna get used. It has to go in the trash. Look at all the space we just cleared of things that never even had to be in here. Never even had to be in here, any of this. Got all this junk in here from the mice. Just throw it in the wood stove. We gotta clean all this stuff up now. It's very hot in here. The sun just came out and it's instantly baking in here. I bought this nice pot at Walmart. This is for maple syrup production next year. Was my intention for it. And inside here, is some camping stuff. All right. Everything in here now doesn't have to go anywhere. I can just move it around as I sweep. Yeah, it's baking in here. Now that the sun just popped out 
instantly baking in here. It's just like unbearable, but it'll be fine once the sun goes down. Kind of looks like a place a mouse might want to live. No, I'm always afraid to open that for years. Every time I've opened this. What do you guys think? Should I keep these things that belong to the truck? Or should I clear this space out and use it for something? Because in the winter, this could literally be used as like a little refrigerator. The back of this is against the freezing cold outside. And I could just insulate the front of it a little or not at all. I'm just saying so my heat I'm producing doesn't get in there, but everything else. This could be like a little freezer in the winter. Someone also said I could do that here with the engine compartment that opens up. Because there's no engine or anything left. Oops. All right, we got that good spider web in my hair. Um, the only stressful thing is it's probably over 100 degrees in here. That's the only thing. I don't know how accurate this would be. That's saying, I, I don't think that's even accurate, but I think it's like 100 something degrees in here right now. So I cleaned all this stuff up, all the mouse shit, and this coffee here, this one's new. I don't think they could have possibly got into it, but there's mouse poop right on it. It's probably just gonna go right in the trash. Plus that coffee might be bad if it was in here all summer in that kind of heat. This I'll try to burn through that entire box once we get the fire started. I'm only gonna use the fire for cooking, so everything in here, that's probably so super dry from baking in here all year. All right, we did good. I got a drink here. I also got a candle we can leave burning throughout the night. Not like we're gonna burn this metal building down. Now I wanna go to the store. I wanna get some cleaner. I gotta get food, I didn't even bring that. I do have the mattress for that in the car. I didn't leave it in here for obvious reasons. You know how that mattress would be destroyed if I left it in here by the mice. I thought I did a pretty good job not leaving much in here. But a roll of paper towels and that boxes, they made a good amount of mess. I also, when I'm at the store, I want to buy some more mouse traps. So these here, I learned a while back, you can have too many mouse traps because the peanut butter and food you put on will literally rot before it gets eaten by something. So I, when I'm not here for long periods of time, I need to come up with a better solution that does not involve poison. And I think that would be, they have a made by Victor, an electric mouse trap with a bucket. It, it, but that would that would stink so bad. I don't know. In the comments, do you guys have any solutions on how to deal with this place? Because you're never going to make it completely sealed for what it is. It's a little camp. I don't mind the mice being in here. I just don't want them destroying things. So I guess that's my own fault. I need to get rid of anything. This piece of insulation, everything like this needs to go. It needs to get out of here when I leave here tomorrow. Everything that they could possibly want to live in. They need, it needs to be gone. All right, this place is now in the full sun and in the past hour or so, the sky has cleared up. No more clouds. Okay, we go in here now. 
I put a thermometer in here and almost 100 degrees. Not quite, almost. Still pretty bad. Can't wait to see how cool it gets once the sun goes down. Once the sun goes down, I think it'll cool down really fast. I'm gonna leave the door open. I'm gonna head to the store now and I wanted to get a few things. This is what I was talking about before. All the weights pushing down in the center of the beams, which could make them break. So when I leave here tomorrow, just in the center part of the building, I'm just gonna get like a normal eight foot piece of lumber, probably a two by six, and I wanna get two lolly columns in here. And that's how I wanna leave it through the winter, just so the building won't get crushed. Alrighty, let's head out. The roads are very grown in this time of year. It's because of all the rain. No one's really been up here this year. So I'm low on gas, we're gonna go get some gas and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the supermarket and the Home Depot. One of the first warm days, we actually are kicking up some good dust today. got some fall colors coming. And just stopping for some quick gasoline. We're gonna have to go to another store now. They got lolly columns but not the adjustable type. All right, everyone, it looks like they did have them after all, so I'm going to get two of these right here. See, there's many different types. I don't think we need these ones, which are w really strong. These ones right here that I'm getting go up to about 12,000 pounds a piece, so I'll get two of them cheaper ones. The reason I didn't see what I was looking for earlier is because the last time I was in here looking for them, they had really thick ones like that that you adjust and you put a pin through them. I was actually looking for the really thick ones, which... We're pretty cheap last time, but I don't think they have them at this store, so this will have to do. Let's go find a beam. All right, everyone, we're back. It's possible we might have a friend living underneath this place. Because I keep getting whiffs of a skunk. Back. Temperature now is down to exactly 80 since this thing's not in the sun anymore. So it feels a lot nicer in here. So I got some stuff to eat. I'm gonna fire the stove right up because I don't have a cooler or anything. And that stuff will go bad pretty soon. So let's fire this thing up. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to get at the store, so I brought that pot, but I don't think I'm gonna use it. I think I'm gonna use some of these little tiny pans right here, which should still be clean on the inside. stove up. We got a good amount of kindling in there already. Check this out. Now we're gonna go fire this thing up. That should catch pretty easily. Let me just make sure the pipe is open, which it was not. Damper's all the way open. It looks like we already got a good draft going up the chimney. I don't think we're gonna get smoke in here. Let's see. Get that pot off of there, so I'm not going to use that. Is there enough cardboard for this thing to catch? The smoke's all going up nicely. Yeah, I think that's going to catch nice. Everything in there is so dry, it's been baking in here all year long. Once we get a couple of those boards to start, we'll be good. We got a good amount of wood we can just keep throwing on in. It just made it worse. But look, all the smoke's going right out. Nice. I 
did load a lot of cardboard in there, so we'll see. All right, everyone, this thing is burning pretty well now. That's going nice. Once it settles down, we'll throw a couple big logs on it. But I'm going to let this thing go for probably an hour before we throw the food on, get it nice and hot because, yeah, that's not that hot. I can't touch it really, but that's not that hot. And people sometimes say in these videos, remove the burners. Those don't come off. This is a knockoff stove of the original type. And up here, if we look up at the gauge... We're almost into operation temperatures. That's climbing fast. And this room is getting hot really fast. But this fire, I'm going to make sure it's completely out by the time I go to bed. It won't take long for this thing to burn itself out. Probably, right now it's like, what, 5 o'clock? So I probably won't let this thing be hot past like 9. I'll play with it for a little while. Then we'll let it shut down before bedtime. And we're going to leave this door open. Still exactly 80 in here, but I'm sure this is going to make it start climbing fast. If you were watching the second camera, you can see it's now burning a lot cleaner than it was. And if you see little flakes and stuff falling out of the chimney, that's creosote that's cracking and drying up on the inside of the pipe. It's just falling off at the moment. It's burning cleaner than it was. And if you remember my last video here, once this thing gets up into operating temperatures, it burns the smoke pretty well. So that's going to start burning cleaner and cleaner. Let's see if we can get this spider friend off of here so he doesn't accidentally touch the pipe. Oh, he dropped. Yeah, that's hot enough to burn you right there. This whole thing is hot enough to burn you. Wow, that thing's clearing up really fast. You can barely see the smoke now. It's starting to burn very clean as the fire gets bigger. All right, everyone. I just sat here for about an hour doing some editing. 
Right now I'm just transferring a few things out of camera number two. It's less stressful when you edit these extremely long videos throughout because then you don't forget how you wanted to put it together and things. Then you don't have to spend like half of a day afterwards putting it together if you do it as you go along since you don't actually have to watch everything because you know exactly what you just did and what you need to fix. Well, this thing here, I'm, it's having trouble transferring for some reason. It's the third attempt and it keeps corrupting the file. So right now, we've gone up to now about 90 degrees. So this thing is cooking in here. We're not gonna have this thing running tonight, so I don't have a CO detector with me today, but I can definitely tell oxygen levels are going down in here. Look at that, that is really, really hot. Not a single bit of smoke outside. That's burning very hot. I want to start getting rid of all this debris here that the mice were living in. This is going to be the first stuff to get burned. Wow, this is so dry from sitting in the hot truck. Well, there's not much. I haven't even got ready to start cooking yet, so good. Good thing we got all that stuff. Really dry stuff. Wow, this door, if you feel right here, you can just feel heat just pushing out the top. And by the floor, there's a good draft coming up in here. I love feeling that through the single door. All right, everyone, it's now been another half an hour and the temperature has gone up even more to now 95 in here. Despite the stove, I actually turn the damper down. See, it's almost off. We're regulating it a lot. Out, that's too hot to open this time. Yeah, it's because the fire might be smaller now, but this entire casting is super hot. Look at that. It's at the top of the operating range. It's burning really good in there. I think we're going to go get the food now out of the car and start this thing up. So I can already tell you guys, I'm not going to be using this truck camp again in the summer months. It's unbearably hot. That was actually really fun in the winter because this wood stove could almost not even keep up. But right now it's barely running. And every, yeah, so this is my breakfast right here. That was from the discount shelf half off. This can be like for a dessert. I brought an onion. I really didn't know what to buy, so I just bought whatever random stuff from the store. I bought this because it was with all the milkshakes in the cooler. I think it's disgusting. It's fermented milk. I didn't realize what it was until I opened it and looked it up on the internet. Got some mushrooms that I'm going to put in this little pot here with butter, stir it around. And I bought some seasoned chicken, which was also discounted from the store. So we'll cook this chicken in this little pan here. I'll probably have to do a couple little batches because I don't have a big pot. Well, I got that other big pot, but I don't want to have to clean it. Got some butter, a drink, and maybe tonight we'll have a visitor from the bear or the suspected skunk that's living underneath here. At least this is clean enough. We'll be cooking it. There's no way the mouse got into this because this was all sealed. I think I'm gonna end up getting heat stroke in here. I can't stay in here. I'm gonna have to not eat at this table. I'm gonna have to go outside. Wouldn't be surprised if my dessert there starts melting. So these obviously aren't gonna all fit in here. So we'll have to do two batches to cook all this. There we go. Throw some butter in there, like that. Occasionally I'll open it up and stir it around. You can probably tell by my arms, it's extremely hot in here. I'm sweating so much. Cover doesn't go on, whatever. They shrink when they cook. I did promise I would make a video at this place, but I should have just cooked outside. I shouldn't have actually used the wood stove. 
So I think we can fit, yeah, we can fit half of that in there. And the rest of it we'll do a second batch. All right. We're well, gonna smell like food in here tonight. We're gonna have to have, or well, we're gonna have a big bear come visit us if we leave that screen open. I gotta go pull the pot holders out of the microwave. It's a good thing I have those in here from last time because I would have forgot them. I'd be using a paper towel for that. Why did I not put butter underneath that chicken? I meant to, but I forgot. Is it too late? No, it's okay. Get it underneath them all. Before it starts sticking to the bottom, which it already did. Let's try not to burn that. I gotta go outside. I'm gonna take one of my Gatorades with me. I can't stay in here right now. This is probably where I'm gonna end up eating. Like I said, we got that nice cold breeze coming in on the floor. Feels like air conditioning sitting over here by the edge compared to standing up over there. All right, everyone, it's been about 10 minutes. Time to flip them. Awesome, they didn't stick at all with that butter. They look good. Another five minutes or so, those will be completely done. I'm actually gonna move them onto the colder burner so we can start speeding this stuff up, which is barely cooking if we look in there. You see that? I actually opened this a couple minutes ago. The butter wasn't even completely melted. Now it is. So this will start cooking a lot faster. Maybe it'll all even be done at the same time now, now that I put this over on the other burner. Yeah. It may just work out because this is slowing down. So another 10 minutes, I think we'll be ready to eat. Uh-oh, we got a boil over happening. That burner's a little too hot. That stuff actually might be cooked now. Just walked away for a minute. This burner is just so hot, that one right there. And we can't turn the stove down anymore. It's as cold as it goes. All right, everyone. Let's see if this stuff is done. We gotta cut, it, cut into one of the thick pieces. It should be done. It's been like, yeah, that's done. It's nice and tender. Took about just under 20 minutes to make it. It is the butter is so soft and melting in here. Let's get that out onto my plate. And we can go ahead and eat that while I cook up the second batch. Everything has to be cooked. We have no way to refrigerate it, so I'll eat whatever I can. And then I'll walk the remains of it deep into the woods and whatever is out there can eat it. Let's see. Get all this out of there. We'll have a second batch of everything. Wow, this is melting. It's gonna make a mess. This is really melting. This room is so hot. The butter that's in there is good for that. And the butter that's in here is good for this. There we go. Paper towels. Nice. All right, that was a quick and easy meal. While that's cooling for a minute, let's take a look inside the stove. What do we got going? I haven't put anything in here in literally an hour. And look, it's still very red hot in there. Let's spread that stuff out. 
Yeah, this is gonna cook our dinner. We are not putting anything else in here. I want this room to start getting cold so I can go to sleep later. And we're not putting anything else in this stove. We're gonna let it burn out. So, we, look at this. We didn't even burn all the kindling in that thing. So we're doing very good now. Let's get our food onto the stove once again. There we go, second batch. Look at that. It's now hotter than it was when the truck was sitting in the sun. We just broke 100, despite the stove slowly calming down. Once we're done with the food, we're gonna open this all the way up so it can just burn out really fast. Yeah, this place will be ready for cooking soon, and I gotta clean up a little bit of grease. But, you know, the heat's not as, even bothering me as much now. Maybe when I start eating some warm food, but I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna eat at the table. Wow, the chair feels like it's a heated seat. Everything in this room is just so hot to the touch. Mmm, good. All the chicken's cooked. That was a really fatty, chewy piece. Bears coming tonight. <coughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna do just like we did before. We're gonna quickly go ahead and just flip all these pieces, and they should be done in just a couple of minutes. Although the stove is not as hot as it once was, look at that. Because we're not putting more wood in, so this is going to take slightly longer now. Although, look at the grease we got on this thing. I, I may throw another piece of wood in here just to fire it up so it burns everything off itself. Uh, those are just about done. I'm, I think I might take those off because there's not as many this time. So the mushrooms cooked faster. We'll throw that back on towards the end. Yeah, I want to fire this thing back up with another piece. But I'm only going to throw things in that I know will burn fast. Yeah, that's why it's not cooking that fast, you see? There's not much really going in there right now. But anything I throw in there, it'll catch up real fast. Just opening the door, that really fed heat into there. What do we got that's small? Stuff like this. That won't burn for long. These pieces of scrap. Although those will be perfect for starting a fire next time, so. Yeah, let's throw the bigger piece in there for now. That should be fine to cook that food. Just a little bit of stuff. If you guys remember back in the winter, I made all kinds of awesome shots of this truck from far away. This is why we can't really do it. It's so overgrown, you can't even see the truck from far away. The only part of the truck that's trimmed is the back of it. Here's a little open area. 
Nothing's growing really here. Alright everyone, the second batch of food appears to be done. Cooked a little bit differently. We got the temperature starting to go back up, but what's in there, that's burning really fast. This place, I think it'll be nice and cold and give it like two hours. All right, everyone, that's not that much food, so I can finish that. Then we gotta go and do some dishes in the stream before it gets too dark. It's getting dark fast. Sometimes if you leave stuff in the woods like this, especially a bear, they have a better nose than a dog. It'll be able to track you right back here. All right, everyone, we're walking to the stream now. And I'm noticing lots of areas that are knocked down. Like, I just walked through here to put my dishes at the stream. But right here, something's been walking through here often enough. Look at all the ferns dying out. Winter's coming already. You can see it, all the trees. Lots of silt. The silt wasn't all here last time. It's been raining a lot this year, so the stream's been running a lot this year. Really nice creek. Got to do some quick dishes. All right, this wood stove is close to being done. All right, so the temperature's already starting to go down a little bit. We're almost back to 90. And I just set a bunch of traps. I forgot to buy them when I went out to the store. These are ones I, I just had in here. And when they get older, they start corroding and they don't work as well. So I probably should replace them. When they start corroding and don't work as well, you find all the peanut butter missing because the mouse was able to lick it off without setting it off. I used to take so much time in my older videos and go in live catch and move all the mice but you're just giving somebody else a problem no matter where you move them the, what, originally when i bought my abandoned house that made me give up on ever live catching one again there had to have been hundreds of them in there running around just destroying the building but i haven't have not had one inside in over two years because we catch them before they can get in the house now over here i wiped down my table cleaned everything up so hopefully that gets the mice before they come over near our food or start crawling on me. I may have forgot a bed sheet, which won't be fun because my skin is going to stick to that plastic mattress. Oh well. And we got a candle here I'll light up when we get back. It's starting to get dark. I'm going to sit down here maybe for like a half an hour, edit a few things. It'll be almost completely dark. Then I kind of want to drive around on some of the dirt roads around here. Maybe we can find a moose. Then we'll come back here and go to sleep. dark out. The sky looks pretty. It's really dark in just this one section of the road. It'll open back up. We're out trees and stuff pretty soon. Here we go. Opening back up. that before. Well, I'm getting back out to the main road. I just saw a car. Here we go. for a bit and if we see a cool animal I'll show it to you guys.
So there's just this car in the middle of the road there. I wonder if they're looking at an animal or something. Just came up on a car. So I don't know. I'm gonna go slow and let that guy get in front of me so I can put my lights back on without bothering him. I'll just go slow for a little bit. Uh, we now got a traffic jam in the middle of nowhere. There's a log truck behind me now. I think he's pissed off. He's getting so close to me. Now the guy in front of me is finally starting to go faster. All right, everyone, we're back over three hours later, and I expect this thing to be completely cold. Yeah, it is. And look at that, the little security light came on. So if that light comes on, we'll know if something's at the door. And I am pretty sure that's what a lot of comments were talking about the last time I camped here. Everyone was mentioning lights that kept turning on in the middle of the night in the rear windows when I was sleeping. And I would say that's what it was. Those solar security lights. Yeah, it's cold in here. I can feel residual heat on the stove just because the metal is so thick. But that thing is just about out. Temperature update. Exactly 70 degrees. And the temperature is just going to keep dropping. I'm not going to bed yet. It's like 9 o'clock, so I'm going to maybe tidy up, maybe go for a walk in the woods, and I'm not going to sleep usually until like 12 or so, and this place will be even colder. I'm going to leave that open. I'm hoping it gets down cold enough where I can keep the door shut, and I don't see why it wouldn't get down that low. Good. Because it was so hot in here earlier, look at this. Look at the moisture in those boxes. Better eat those in the morning or they're going to start growing mold now. All right, everyone, it's almost midnight, and we've got down to a decent temperature for sleeping, about 64 degrees. Decent. And I've got a bed sheet now. Got to go put that on. I'm happy that the temperature has cooled down a lot because now I don't have to worry about a bear coming in if I leave this open. I think this is really cool. The light outside comes on as soon as you, before you even walk out the door, it can sense your feet. It knows. Oh. oh, there we go. It's off. Take a look at this, everyone. The moon is very, very bright today. It's bright enough that we could go for a walk out here and not even need flashlights. You can't see it in the camera, but it's very, very bright. I don't remember these holes being in the side of the truck. Uh, I've camped here a few times before. I don't ever remember them holes. I guess I didn't notice them. It's possible we, we may have had company. Something just ran away. None of the traps are set, so it didn't come for peanut butter. Alrighty. How did I put the clock here last year? There we go. Must have been right here on that thumbtack, maybe. Hear that? I think that's a tree frog outside. All I hear is nice crickets, and now I hear, I put a clock in here, got a ticking sound. Nice and quiet out right now. Inside here, we've now made it down to about 62 degrees. Outside's reading now 57, and it should keep dropping. The sky's clear. If we look outside, you can still see the big moon. It's pretty clear. 
there's just one cloud in front of it. That looks kind of cool. See? Cloud, one part of it's all lit up. All right, let's shut this door for tonight. That is one dirty window.
Good morning, everyone. Well, I definitely slept, and I'm still tired. I probably got maybe five hours of sleep. The camera cut off. So that just tells me, next time I make a time lapse like this, because I'm recording it in real time, I want the sound and I want to be able to look at it. Like if I saw a mouse on the floor, I want to be able to actually show that. So that's why I record this in real time. So next time I just have to record it in lower quality. So that's, I just, I literally filled up and ran out of space. That's why the camera shut off. And right now I woke up it might be because it's starting to heat up in here, but it's not bad by far. It's still below 70 degrees. We're still very good in here for temperature. But right here, this back wall, the exposed wall, I think is starting to heat up in the sun, despite the truck being yellow, which is not a very dark color. I might have missed cleaning something in here. Because now that it's morning, I'm getting a whiff of something gross in here. Throughout the night, it was peaceful, very quiet, didn't hear anything. No attempted break-ins from the bear. So everyone, I just spent the past hour and ten minutes in here just talking to somebody on the phone who called me. And since that... The sun's been baking down in this place, making it hotter. It's not unbearable yet. I don't plan on being in here for long. I'm just going to have my quick breakfast, clean up my bedding, and get out of here. Most of the stuff I moved outside is not coming back in here this time. I'm just going to load that stuff up and dispose of it somewhere. Now, temperature. Oh, wow. We're almost back up to 80 from 57. Yeah, we climbed a lot. 80 is not that horrible. I'm going to go open the door and I'm just going to have a quick breakfast. And I almost forgot we got those jacks we're going to put in here. So I just bought a 2x4 because the ceiling's not very high. I want to maybe start it on this beam. Two, three. I think it can go across these four. And then we'll just put the jacks in here. That's only in case I don't come here in the winter just so it doesn't collapse, because these beams are small, and if we ever got like three feet of snow up on this roof, it could do some damage, because last time I could see it buckling and stuff. Pretty sure that's what broke the glue right there. So I'm going right here. I'm, that's all like grass and stuff I tracked in on my shoe, and we have a friend on the bed. Look at that. And a spider. Trying to get them off so I can take the sheets off. This guy is holding on good. He's trying to get them on the floor without hurting them. He's gone. Yeah, he's on the floor crawling. All right, everyone. I think we're all set to lock this thing up for the winter. Let me show you what I got going on inside. I didn't film any of this because it's just so hot in here. I removed anything I think a mouse might get into. So, this is what we got set up in here. It's not under a lot of tension because that'll happen once there's weight on it. It's just in there enough where you can't rip it out. See, so you put a wrench right here. I didn't do that. It's just hand tight, all of it. See, they actually had to go upside down because the ceiling is so short for the shorter range of it, because these go up to eight feet. Ceiling in here is just, just slightly over six feet. Looks good, I think that'll be fine. I maybe could have got away with just one of them if I bought like a two by eight, but this is better for balance. Sometime maybe I'll come back with a 10 foot piece instead of an eight foot board. So the jacks are in place and they're not even that intrusive. They're not even in my way walking around in here. But if I ever camp in here again, they, they pop down so easily. I'll never have to put this stuff together again. Just a couple of unscrews and they're out. That's good. It also came with the plates here that go on the top. 
and you can screw them into place because a lot of times people use these to straighten out their floors in their house and they'll be in the basement indefinitely. This is not to be indefinite, so good enough. Time to get back on the road. I just loaded all the wood I didn't want into the back of the truck. We'll get rid of that stuff because that's a pain in the butt moving it back and forth and I actually hurt myself loading it so I'm glad I don't have to move that stuff again. This is the piece of wood used in every single one of our culvert camps. So that's why it's being kept. I'll probably do that again in the winter with the same exact piece of wood. I'll just have to remove these little electrical stuff from the last camp we did. The hydroelectric camp inside the culvert. So that's the last thing to put away is the light. Alright everybody, we're out of here for today. I hope today's video of the truck camp was interesting. Maybe we'll come back out in the winter sometime. That's more fun anyways, being out that time of year when it's nice and cold to run the wood stoves. Thanks for watching and have a great day.